Hey, you feeling all right? Well, whatever. I'm just winging it here. Ever since then, I haven't been able to react at all whenever I see Tom. I'm home. Huh? Where's dinner? I wonder, the shadow seems to be talking to me. But I can't make out what it's saying. Hey. Both of you, say something to mom, will ya? No way. You know, we really don't need a dad in this house. My name is Jessica Thompson, a 40-year-old mother of two. My husband, Tom, is two years older, and we got married when I was 25. We were colleagues at the same company, him being my senior. We started dating about a year after I joined the company, got married when I found out I was pregnant, and I became a stay-at-home mom at Tom's request. He said, I'll earn enough, so all you need to do is take care of the house. Back then, I found those words very reassuring. Then our son, Mark, was born, and two years later our daughter, Emily, came along. From that point on, my days were filled with housework and parenting. That was partly because I didn't have any reliable family or in-laws nearby. Both my parents' house and my in-laws' house were more than an hour away by plane. Since I moved to New York for college, even though my mom came to help when I gave birth, it was impossible for her to stay for a long time. Looking back, I should have gone back to my parents' house for childbirth. But back then, Tom's wish for me to protect our home had deeply rooted itself inside me. My mom always told me to come back home if things ever got too tough. But I, at the time, was unaware of this and turned her down. Now, Tom is a sales manager at a mid-sized trading company. And this year, with Emily entering junior high, I've started working part-time. Tom suddenly started saying this to me. You know, I've been thinking. It's probably better if Mark goes to a private high school, don't you think? As for me, I was fine with whatever he preferred, be it public or private. Actually, where I grew up, public schools were the only option, so I didn't really understand the difference. But it seemed like Tom had a different perspective. You might not be aware of this, but in the corporate world, the university you graduate from creates significant cliques. You can't really get into a good university if you go to a public high school. Private is definitely the way to go. I wish he would have told me all of this when Mark was entering middle school. This is ridiculous. If I really want to go somewhere, I'll look up a good prep school myself. And with that, Mark starts searching on the computer, showing me various local prep schools, summer programs, and winter courses. Emily, being a brother's girl, watches from behind and asks him to let her know if he finds anything good. Sadly, my kids are better at gathering information than I am. So as a parent, the least I can do is not get in the way of their future plans. That's why, to contribute even a little to the tuition, I started working part-time, not just relying on Tom's income. But when I brought this up, Tom just said, well, if that's what you want, let him do as he please. You just want him to get into a good school. That's about all a parent can do, isn't it? And that was all he had to say. He's right, of course. But every time he said that, I couldn't help but feel a bit abandoned. Maybe it's because I barely spend any time with Tom. Since Emily was born, the intimate side of our marriage has completely vanished. Of course, it might have been because I was always busy and exhausted from childcare. Tom did say to me, if it's too hard, you should hire someone to help. I appreciated those words. But they also made me push myself too hard to handle everything on my own. I even collapsed from exhaustion once. That's when I finally broke down and called my mom, crying. She panicked and flew in to help, staying with me and the kids for a while. I even told her about Tom's suggestion to hire a babysitter. If he's saying that, you should take him up on it once in a while. You've always been like this, trying to do everything by yourself until you're completely overwhelmed. Saying this, my mom stroked my head as I lay there and I felt both comforted and pathetic at the same time. Yes, I always wanted to handle everything Tom asked of me on my own. And at night, I would be so exhausted that I'd just fall asleep. Before I knew it, we had become a couple in name only. And by the time I realized that this might not be good for our marriage, so much time had passed that I had lost count of the years. Sure, there were times when I thought, 
why won't he help me? Why doesn't he play with the kids once in a while? But then another part of me would immediately counter that thought. He's working hard so that I can always be with the kids. I'm really grateful for that. So, I have to do my part properly. Even if it means living a life full of miscommunications. One day, Emily held her laundry in her hands and announced, I'm gonna start doing my laundry from today. Is that okay? She asked, even though she hadn't really helped out around the house before. That was surprising, and I said, well, that's a nice offer and I appreciate it, but what brought this on? You have been really busy lately. No, wait, that's not it. You see, mom, I don't like washing my clothes with dads. Now that I think about it, this girl has always been sensitive to even slight changes in scent, often making such comments. Dad's laundry has a weird smell. I don't want it to rub off on my clothes. You don't put any scent on your clothes, mom, which is good. Please don't. At that time, I just thought she was talking about the hair products he always uses. And now she's in puberty. I've often heard that daughters start to dislike their father's belongings around this age. But the story didn't end there. Mom, I need to talk to you. When I came back from my part-time job, Mark was waiting for me. His extremely serious expression told me this wasn't a trivial matter. While we moved to the living room, taking off my jacket, I asked. What's up? It's unusual for you to come to me with such a serious look on your face. Yeah, it's about dad. I gasped. As we sat facing each other on the living room couch, Mark then said. Hey, mom. How much do you know? About what? Mark sighed lightly. Right, I should have known. What do you want to say? Listen, mom, calm down and hear me out. Emily came to me saying that dad is having an affair. An affair? I never thought I'd hear such a word from the mouth of my 15-year-old. You really haven't noticed, have you? From your reaction just now. But, dad is a workaholic. Mom, please, you need to face reality. No matter how much of a workaholic dad is, why haven't we ever had a single family vacation altogether? Is his company really that terrible? But your dad is a director now, he's busy. Yeah, now. But he was a manager before. And you know what, we have families like that in my class too. The parents are so busy they hardly ever see their kids, but at least they take them on overseas vacations in the summer to make up for it. What about us? Mark added on. I fell silent. Now that he mentions it, that's true. I, and only I, take the two of them to my parents' and my in-laws' homes out in the countryside for major holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Since it's a plane ride away, we also take the opportunity to travel around various places. There are a decent number of tourist spots as well. So, I thought that was good enough. No, maybe I was trying to convince myself that it was good enough. I always thought dad was irresponsible. Irresponsible? He's the one supporting our livelihood. That's a parent's obligation, isn't it? What Emily and I are trying to say is whether dad is actually interested in you or us. I felt as if I had been struck by lightning. So, it's finally been said out loud. And Emily, she first hated the smell of dad's laundry. Then she realized it smelled like women's perfume. When? She hangs out with her friends on her days off, right? Even if she doesn't buy it, she'd at least check out the perfume testers, right? She noticed that the scent from dad's laundry mostly smelled like women's perfume. Emily is sensitive to smells and remembered that. And, I have something to apologize to you for. What? I skipped cram school a few times and tried following dad. What? You did that late at night? I apologized in advance because I thought Emily might try to do it if I left her alone. And you know, dad isn't working crazy late hours. He doesn't leave exactly on time, but he left the office around 7 p.m. and there was a woman with him. They went straight to the downtown area together. I didn't have the guts to follow them any further on my own. Of course not! I exclaimed. Yeah, so that's all I can tell you. I'll apologize to you, mom. 
I shook my head vigorously. You're not the one to blame here. But what comes next is a matter for adults. Yeah. But remember this, Emily and I are on your side, mom. Actually, we haven't talked about it since then. But honestly, I had a sneaking suspicion myself. I just didn't want to admit it. So I pretended not to see. I believed that was the way to protect our family. But it was the children who couldn't take it anymore. This is not right. I can't keep making the kids feel bad because of my stubbornness. I made up my mind and hired a detective agency. It cost more than I expected. But I think it was worth pouring my part-time job earnings into it. The result was as bad as it gets. As I looked through the evidence sent by the detective agency, I felt something inside me snap. What have I been maintaining this family for, and for whom? We didn't have time together now, but I thought someday Tom and I could enjoy our time together as a couple. Mom? How long had I been zoning out? I had taken a day off from my part-time job to look at the documents. Until the kids came home, I couldn't do anything. This is not right. I tried to hide the evidence from my sight by covering it. Why? I want to know too. That's not something for kids to see. Come on, I'm already 15. It doesn't matter. All right. Yes, this is absolutely not allowed. But what should I do from now on? I can't seem to settle my feelings. While I was thinking, Tom came back. Startled, I hid the envelope with the evidence in the kitchen cabinet. I'm home. When I saw him entering the room, I couldn't help but utter, huh? What is this? That's what I thought. Surely, that's Tom. My husband. But on the other hand, it's not right. It's not my husband. No, this thing is not even human to begin with. Then what is it? These thoughts whirled in my head, and my mind came to a conclusion. Oh, I see. This is something that shouldn't exist now. Hey, you feeling okay? Whatever, just do as you please. Ever since that moment, I couldn't react at all whenever I saw Tom. His figure gradually became blurrier, and he appeared nothing more than a vague shadow. So, most of what happened afterwards, I heard from Mark and Emily. Unconsciously, I started avoiding Tom's laundry in the basket. I was only preparing meals for three, and it didn't become a big deal right away. After all, Tom rarely came home early. But one day, while the three of us were having dinner. I'm home. Huh? Where's my dinner? Hey you two, say something to mom for me. No way. Why do we have to speak up for mom to you? That was what Mark responded. Look, we don't need a dad in this house. Then Emily took out her smartphone and started to make a call. Hello, Grandma? It's Emily. He's here, so please come quickly. I wondered why Emily was contacting my mother. I heard voices saying, stop it, and it's too late now. I was just watching the situation as if it was someone else's problem. After about 10 minutes, my parents arrived, bringing another man with them. Emily indeed called our grandma, my mom. But they arrived so quickly? What the? What's going on? Mom, what happened? Ah, Jessica. You've become so frail. My mom hugged me tightly. My dad approached the kids, put his arms around their shoulders, and patted them gently. Grandpa. There, there, you've done well. We'll take care of everything from here, so go to your rooms. No, I want to say what I have to say to Dad, who pushed Mom to this point, with my own mouth. He pushed me to this point? Hey, Mom. Do you realize what state you're in right now? We had to call Grandpa and Grandma. We told them Mom's broken. Broken? What does that mean? Look, Dad. Mom doesn't think of you as her husband anymore. Huh? Hey Mark, what the hell are you talking about? Hey, Jessica? My dad gently asked me. How many servings did you make for dinner today? What are you talking about? There are three of us, so I made dinner for three. Oh, but dad, 
haven't you eaten yet? That's terrible, I need to make something right away. I started to get up, but my mom held me back. That's not it, Jessica. We've already eaten. Don't worry about it. We're just here to talk to him. To him? I looked in the direction my mom was pointing. A blurry, gray shadow was swaying back and forth. The kids sent this to us. What? My dad was fluttering an unfamiliar envelope in front of me. A detective agency. Oh, so you've forgotten that too. My mom's lament sounded painful. But I couldn't understand why she looked like she was about to cry. That over there is your husband, Tom. What? The shadow stopped moving. What do you mean, Jessica? The shadow seemed to be saying something to me. But even though the words reached my ears, they didn't make any sense in my mind. That's what I've been saying. It's your fault that mom's broken. She can't even recognize you. What? You've got to be kidding. Hey, Jessica. You know who I am, right? Hey? I felt a sudden grip on my collar, as if the shadow had grabbed me. But still, it was as if the words were coming from a distant place, and I couldn't understand what was being said. That's not gonna work, Dad. Take a good look into Mom's eyes. Let go of Jessica's hand, Tom. My dad pulled me away from the shadows. Then, both of my parents started furiously shouting towards the shadows. Mom, you might not understand what I'm saying right now, but... Mark actually grabbed both of my hands and looked straight into my eyes. We noticed that something was off with you, Mom, so we contacted Grandpa and Grandma. My behavior? Yeah, Mom. It's like you can't see Dad, because you can't stand the fact that this guy is cheating on you. That's not true. Mark, your dad has already passed away, you know. What? Such an absurd voice came from the shadows. Seeing my expression at that moment, Mark seemed like he was about to cry. You understand now, don't you, Dad? That's what's happening. The shadow slowly sank into the ground. During that time, Emily seemed to have prepared a tablet and connected it somewhere. Grandpa, can you see us? Oh, are you okay now, Emily? The voice was my father-in-law's. Grandpa, we are ready. Oh, Mr. Thompson, it's been a while. Same here, Mr. Smith. I really wanted to head your way and meet up, but unfortunately, my wife took ill. I'm so sorry to hear that. Your wife was very fond of Tom. She was indeed overly devoted to our son. Hey, Tom. A voice loud enough to crackle came from the tablet. What is it, Dad? I've got your share of the evidence copied over here. It must have been a shock for Jessica. Dad, even you. Enough, it's been years since you've visited us for the holidays. The only reason I haven't said anything is because Jessica always defended you. I never asked her to do that. Still talking back? Your mother was always troubled, not being able to refrain from complaining to Jessica about you not coming home. She knew she shouldn't have said those things, but couldn't help expressing her regret. And yet, you couldn't come because of that? Want me to read out the documents? Mr. Thompson, could we handle that part here, please? Of course, let's take a good look at how our son reacts to this. Well, let me say this. You've been in an unmistakably close relationship with your coworker, Marie Young, for 10 years, causing rumors around the office. Since you kept telling Jessica to stay home as much as possible, she hardly talked to her old colleagues while you were having quite a time cheating. You even went on overseas vacations in the summer, not showing your face here for the holidays in these 10 years. And Ms. Young believes you two will get married. She started dating you when she was 25, and now she's already 35. She's at fault too. But when it comes down to it, she's ready to pay alimony in case of your divorce. And what about you? You've wasted the best 10 years of her life for marriage. Whoa, I didn't get that part of the story over here. So it has come to that, huh? Hey, Tom. There seemed to be a slight tremble in the shadow. Tom, just sign the divorce papers that Mr. Smith's lawyer has prepared right away. And as for driving Jessica to this point, 
you and Ms. Young are going to pay damages. Don't even think about skimping. Dad, please, I'm begging you. Help me out. I refuse. Listen, Tom, the moment we went through those documents, your mother collapsed and has been hospitalized ever since. Whose fault do you think that is? Mom is. I'd like to give you a piece of my mind right now. You've been cheating for 10 years, how dare you show your face and say that to me? Your mother is in her hospital bed, crying every day, regretting how she brought you up. But, Dad, you're my parent, shouldn't you be helping me? At your age, most people are starting to think about taking care of their parents, and here you are, talking like a spoiled brat. Don't worry, we won't be a burden to you. We are cutting ties with you. That's just. Oh, and by the way, it's a good thing you are an only child. The inheritance we were going to leave you, we will give it all to Mark and Emily. Dad, please don't say that, help me out. Enough. I'm hanging up now. Mr. Smith, I leave the rest to you. Ms. Young is at fault, but she seems to be more deceived by this guy than anything. But I'll leave that to your discretion. Do whatever you see fit with the two of them. Very well. We'll handle this thoroughly. And don't worry, we won't cause any physical harm. The image and sound from the tablet cut off. Now, let's discuss the divorce. The man who came with her seemed to be a lawyer. Making his way to the front. So, Jessica, you wish to proceed with the divorce? A divorce? We are a family of three. Yes, but we need you to officially sign here to proceed. Right. Even if the husband is gone, I guess I still need to file the paperwork. Gone? That's when I truly realized, sorting out my thoughts later, that I actually believed he was gone at that moment. My husband was gone, and he was no longer here. I couldn't pinpoint when it happened, but as time went by, in my mind, Tom's affairs and constant absence were replaced with the idea that he had died. That's why, even though he was right in front of me, I couldn't perceive him as a living person, he was just a vague shadow. Of course, this became clear after receiving counseling later on. So, even though there were contradictions in the fact that I was able to live this life, I couldn't notice them. All I kept thinking was that I wanted to protect the life I had with my two children, Mark and Emily. That was all. As for not calling Ms. Young to this meeting, it was a decision made after discussions between my parents and my in-laws. Showing the kids their father's affair partner in the flesh was just too much. Especially for Emily. So, Ms. Young had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a lawyer. It seems like she had made up her mind because she apologized repeatedly. I didn't think it was okay. Even if he kept saying we would get married someday, 10 years is just too long. Still, I was clinging on to a sliver of hope. And she also talked about my odd state. I was constantly told by him that his wife was cold, but I didn't think it was true. Apparently, he had always told her that I was a cold woman who always excluded him from the family. I changed from feeling sympathy for him to falling in love with him, but now I see, I was just being deceived. Her voice was trembling with anger at that moment. Mr. Lawyer, I will definitely pay the compensation to his wife. On top of that, I have a request. I want to sue him for marriage fraud. Is it possible? Do you have any evidence? I recorded his words just in case a time like this would come. What about getting married to him after he divorces his wife? I've completely woken up after this incident. I'm going to break up with him. Even though she is referred to as a veteran clerk in the office, it seems she is a very skilled worker. The evidence was properly collected and organized. It seems that because she loved him, she couldn't help but hate him intensely. In the end, Tom had turned even the woman he thought was on his side against him. Later on, both of them ended up resigning from the company. However, the circumstances were slightly different. Their relationship had spread to a certain extent within the company. It just hadn't been made public. That's why it was a big deal when Ms. Young exposed that she was suing Tom. What the hell, you're doing such a thing. I've been meeting with you because you were always saying that your wife was cold to you and you couldn't divorce her. 
So what? You came along for the summer vacation trip, didn't you? It was you who came crying to me, saying that your wife told you not to come. I was surprised. Hearing about the state your wife was in. She thoroughly exposed everything to the people around and then Ms. Young resigned voluntarily. The compensation from her to me was paid in a lump sum. It was accompanied by a short letter saying I apologize. Tom eventually had to resign as well. An employee who causes a lawsuit is not needed, that's what it came down to. The compensation for me and child support for the kids was temporarily covered by my in-laws, and the rest would be squeezed out from his personal savings and the sale of the property, as well as from his monthly income. But considering his age and the fact that he was in a managerial position, I wonder what kind of job he can get now. Well, it's none of my business, but I started to receive treatment at the hospital immediately after driving Tom into a corner. Half of it was for examinations and the other half was for counseling. Since it was determined that there was no disruption to my life aside from the issues with Tom, I decided to move back to my parents' house with my kids. I'm sorry for making you change schools at a time like this. It's okay. It's about time for entering high school anyway. I would have been separated from my friends either way. I'm a bit sad about being away from my friends. But it's much better than living with that man. I really want to cherish my kids who say such things. I'm still continuing with counseling. Just not having the root cause of the problem there is a big relief. I'm thinking about going back to work full-time once I get a little better. For the kids and for myself.